Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to model design strips for a complex slab example in RAM concept. In this video, we will review the default design strips around the large opening and add design spans as needed. For large openings, I would expect there to be a zone of forces or stress concentrations adjacent to the opening to account for the load path around the opening. That being said, when I have a large opening, I am specifically looking for wide design strips because the wider strips will average the design forces and moments over a wider area and they may not capture the higher forces that I would expect near the edge of an opening. Now for this sample model, I am seeing that scenario on the eastern side of the large opening in the longitudinal direction. Now to capture the zone of forces or stress concentrations adjacent to the opening, I'm going to go ahead and create a full width design span at this location. So let's go ahead and zoom into this area and get started. Now for my sample model, I've decided that I want to create a new design span with strips that are about two feet wide adjacent to the opening on the eastern side of the opening. Now, to make this process a little easier for myself, I already placed some user lines on this layer that will represent both the edge of the design strips and the center line of the design span. So let me go ahead and turn those on using the visible objects icon. Now I can see those user lines are available and these will basically give me some additional snapping points that I'm looking for. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and review my design span properties and specifically look for anything in this design span that would maybe be slightly different from the rest of the slab. So to do that, I'm going to go to the layer specific toolbar and double click on the span segment icon. Now the majority of the default span properties in this span are identical to the rest of my slab system. Few examples, however, let's go ahead and take a look at the span with calculation and the column strip. In this particular area, I'm going to make the column strip the full width. And I'm going to manually define some span boundary polylines. So I'm going to change this to manual. Let's go ahead and click OK. And now we are ready to create our new design span. Here we're using my snap tools. I will go from the center line of my column line to the opposite side. Once I'm done with that, I can also go ahead and manually create those band, those span boundary polylines that I was discussing earlier. To do that, again, go to your layer specific toolbar and click on your span boundary polyline. Here, I'm going to create a line at both sides of the new span to limit the width of the strips. Now, once that new span is added, before I perform a calculation, I like to generate my strips. And the reason I like to do this is because some of the changes I added could affect other design spans in my model. And I want to take a look at that. So let's go ahead and generate our strips. Now here I can see in the area that I was focused on at the eastern side of that opening looks appropriate and exactly what I was looking for. I can see my two foot wide design span and design strips are available. But what I'll also notice is that since a span boundary polyline was located here, it basically truncated the middle strips in the adjacent span. So to rectify that situation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a span boundary polyline to the other side of that design span and set the strips to manual as well. 
So let's go ahead and add those changes. Finally, let's go ahead and regenerate the strips and take a look at our plan. So everything here looks exactly how I would like to detail it. I have basically told the program to go ahead and investigate the area outside the opening because I wasn't a fan of those very large um, or those very wide middle strips that were adjacent to that opening. I didn't want the force concentration to be averaged over that entire area. So now I'm taking a look specifically at the edge of the opening and reinforcement will be added in this area to take care of those stress concentrations. Now at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and perform a calculation. Once the calculation is performed, I can go ahead and take a look at my reinforcement results. Now for convenience, I went ahead and turned on my design strips and the hatching for the design spans on this plan. And here I can see that specific bars are being located in that region adjacent to the opening to take care of that load path around the opening. Now this technique can be used anytime that you are expecting to see a large stress concentration and you want to isolate that to a specific design span and capture that reinforcement. Now one last word about this particular process and let's go ahead and take a look at our element layer. Layer. Now in this particular area adjacent to that opening what you're going to notice is that the element size for this model was set to the default of three feet, which is actually wider than the width of that design span or the design strips in that area. So here you can see that I have just one element in that particular area. If you would like some additional elements, you could consider making that strip a little bit wider than your default element size or decrease your element size uh, in this particular area. Just note that if you decrease your element size, that will add some time to your calculation. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.